I want to make sure I get her. My guest is Chris Bennett, and we're talking about cannabis, and we're talking about marijuana, we're talking about hemp, and uh, its relation in, in the Bible. Would you just repeat the last, uh, your, your, your last statement, basically? Yeah. Just, just well, recap well, that, please. Yeah. Uh, the early Christian period, up until, you know, like 350 or so AD, there were all sorts of different Christian groups, and uh, one of these Christian groups rose to prominence, that being the Roman Catholic Church, uh, which had received uh, the favoritism of uh, the Roman Empire, and the, uh, the emperors such as Constantine and Theodosius and other, other Roman emperors. And um, uh, they were in conflict. Even from the time of Paul in the New Testament, we can see evidence of this in the books of uh, Corinthians uh, and some other texts, uh, with other Christian groups. And these Christian groups are now known as under the collective name of the Gnostics. And one of the main points of contention between the, the Roman Catholic Church, and there weren't any other, you know, none of the other major Christian denominations we know of today were in existence at this time, the Protestants or the Anglicans or the Baptists. These are all offshoots of... Uh, of, uh, uh, of the Roman Catholic tradition and uh, uh, the, the ones that offshoots of, uh, off that. Um, so they all come from the biblical tradition and the Bible was put together, let's believe, around, around 325 AD at the Council of Nicaea. One of the main points of contention between these other Christian groups and the Roman Catholic Church was water baptism versus uh, initiation with this anointing oil. And the Gnostics in their text uh, they say there is fire in the anointing oil. Through the anointing oil, we're uh, initiated into unfading bliss and require no teaching. And they apply it for a number of medical applications, identical with uses of uh, medical marijuana today. And they said there was only water in the baptism, or it was an empty, an empty ritual. Um, and uh, um, the, and on, uh, for their part, the Catholic Church, uh, in condemning the Gnostics and in trying to destroy all their texts, um, uh, they said that they were initiating with un, uh, uh, unholy sacraments, secret sacraments, and uh, accused them of all sorts of uh, heinous crimes and uh, worse. And so uh, um, the cannabis was basically lost throughout the whole period of the Dark Ages, where where you know human Western culture dropped back to Stone Age mentality and levels, where there was no other books for 1,200 years except for the Bible, which was only read in, in Latin. Um, and uh, so it completely disappeared from, from the scene, except for underground use, and then it started to reemerge in, uh, <coughs> after around 1200 uh, A.D. And you know, a lot of these uh, accusations of witchcraft have to do with the use of cannabis and other plants uh, that were going on in the Middle Ages and stuff. And then there was a lot of uh, secret use of cannabis by uh, Rosicrucian and uh, 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 like like other occult groups, alchemists uh, alchem alchem and other other occultists were using cannabis, but most of it was uh, was underground use, and it was considered a, a devil sacrament right up until 16th or 17th century, you know? We, uh, you know, it's hard It's hard to figure this uh, This was called the Inquisition. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they were killing people, hanging people, uh, burning people for being witches, accusing... There's a... Is this Christianity stuff, and... Too, uh, in a large way, like the uh, the modern drug war and the uh, forfeiture laws and stuff, that was the same sort of uh, uh, thing that was going on in the, in the Inquisition, and there was a great desire to take people's property and possessions, and uh, uh, in the same way that police... Uh, 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 officers are often tempted to uh, maybe even plant some material on somebody in order to take, be able to take their home and stuff. And these types of things have happened. It's been well documented. Uh, um, so the, the same forfeiture laws that uh, really fuel the, the modern drug war as well, in fact, in, in the Inquisition period. Well, let's the, the the confiscation. When they go in and confiscate the, the pot, when they confiscate the money, I mean, that ain't going... Uh, that ain't going uh, anywhere good for the people. What can we do? What can we do? What do, what do you, direction do you go in? Now, now, I haven't been into the paraphernalia movement. I haven't been into the head shop scene for 20 years. Probably been, been out of it 20 years. Well, I think there's lots of things people can do nowadays. You know, when we see a story on the news, uh, you can write the media and say, hey, you know, here's another view on on that story. Or you can uh, support politicians like, say, Ron Paul or uh, uh, Dennis Kucinich down there in the United States that, that represent our views. 
uh, on these matters. You know, put your put some money behind them and join their campaigns and support them, and uh, hopefully they can bring change. You know, um, but you know, I think education has been the, the biggest uh, weapon that we have. You know, the truth is on our side. You know, learn about cannabis. Learn about cannabis and cancer-fighting properties. That there's that there is truth to this uh, Rick Stinson oil, this, the Phoenix Spear stuff. You know that there is truth to this, this industrial hemp claims, uh, hemp for paper that we can save our national forests by converting to hemp paper, and we can move away from soil depleting cotton, which uh, you know in a large way causes depression and turns a lot large areas of America into a dust bowl. Uh, because cotton is so hard on the soil and 50% of the chemicals and pesticides used in agriculture are used on cotton and we could be growing organic hemp domestically replacing all that and healing the soil and you know, uh, 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 making the world a better place instead of uh, 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 taxing it and uh, uh, ruining it with these, with these toxic plants like uh, cotton well not even another toxic, toxin but the toxic uh, chemicals and pesticides used in the, in the agricultural cycle of cotton um, you know, all these types of things. Uh, um, so, you know, educate yourself and then educate others. Once you've educated yourself, you know, it starts with you as a person. And then you arm yourself with knowledge. And then you go out with that knowledge and you use your powers to spread it. And you tell other people. And that's why this movement has grown into this massive movement that it has. And that there's so many people supporting it and it's starting to get uh, a, a lot of credibility is because of all the facts people have collected and all the people educating themselves and getting out there and educating others. It is about education, you know, and that's that's why I started the Free American in the first place to try to figure out what happened at Waco. Why why is government uh, killing people and why are they arresting people? Why are they putting people in jail? This is a, this is a, a, a method of control. I mean, this well, we need more tax money for for more law enforcement. And we get law enforcement like the uh, BATF here, which are the ones that were responsible for Waco and Oklahoma City and all that. They're sending guns down to the drug dealers in the uh, in in Mexico. I'm going. Well, maybe maybe that's just one branch of the government shifting the uh, you know the BATF sending the guns to the CIA who are running the drug cartels. And I I found documentation from special forces colonels that said the. Uh, and the Mossad were bringing in the coke game here. Oh yeah, you know the, the Iran Contra uh, stuff and all that type of stuff for sure. You know, one time I was a, uh, uh, a hashish judge at the Candace Chop in Amsterdam, and I was in a uh, hotel room with a bunch of uh, hashish importers. And one of them was telling a story of where he he had a, a big sack of what he was calling Afghan bananas, and they were these big banana-shaped lumps of hashish brought in from uh, that were brought in from Afghanistan. And he told the story of where he picked that up, and he's been on a German military base, American military base, and uh, gone right into the, the the barracks there with the boys. And there they are with their submachine guns around the lockbox. They open up the lockbox. There's heroin, there's opium, there's hashish. Right there in the American military base. <laughs> the, and, uh, this, is, this is only like 10 years ago, you know what I mean? Uh, the, the, uh, the story in my book, uh, and you know, I'd be happy to trade books with you, the, uh, yeah. the uh, uh, Mis uh, Mystery Babylon, which is now available on Amazon and Book Nook and all that, uh, talks about the, uh, the Mossad and the CIA. They brought the planes they built the watchtowers down there that ran right alongside Iran Contra. They just didn't. They they had a, a bigger security block on it. They were they had another whole operation called Operation George Orwell, where they were uh, monitoring the senators and the priests and the Catholics that might know of this. Mm. So the. Uh, if the government's in the drug business and they're smuggling the drugs in here and selling it to your kids or you and and then they're they're they certainly know who who got the drugs so you're you're a target. Yeah, I don't know how organized it all is. You know what I mean? Whether it's like the whole government or people that work in the government, you know, uh, um, working the rules to their advantage and uh, uh, taking advantage of their positions in order to. To get these things into the country, I, you know, it's hard for me to just imagine, like, you know, something like the whole police department and the whole government working in conjunction against the people, just because so many people are involved. And I can 
you know, big people are usually pretty good people, you know, usually most people are good people, and I can't believe nobody would come clean and say, ah, you know, this is what we've been doing, you know, unless it was just a, a few uh, dirty rat bags, you know, that were working together. So, I, you know, I don't know, I don't know to what extent, you know, the, the conspiracy is taking place. I think a lot of, you know, prohibition is, uh, uh, people really believe that they're right, that marijuana is evil, and it's easy for them to dehumanize its users because they, they think it's so bad and they, therefore they're justified in whatever they do and you know even if even if they're maybe breaking some rules to get somebody in jail they feel they're justified because this person is a, a dirty drug user you know uh, um, so uh, um, yeah there's like there's a lot of different elements at play here you know some of it's economic some of it's uh, societal uh, um, and uh, you know they're all working together in different ways and, and, and things like that um, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly what, what the answer to that would be. It's, it's, it's been a 20-year struggle for me trying to legalize marijuana and, and, and deal with it. And it seems that the biggest uh, enemy of legalization, well, the biggest enemies of legalization are uh, um, ignorance, you know, which we have to combat with education, economics, which we have to combat with facts on what legal marijuana would look like, what kind of uh, money can we bring into the system, you know, what kind of industries are we going to create from this, versus uh, the, the, the things like the police lobby and the prison lobby, which are making a lot of money off prohibition and feel their own industries are, are threatened uh, um, um, by, by, by the possibility of legalization that somehow this is going to put them out of work. Well, this is big business here. I mean, we're talking about the whole paper industry. All of the, all of the paper that's coming out now is being coming, coming off of trees, but for 200 years it came from the hemp plants. Oh, yeah, for, for thousands of years. You thousands. Know. Uh, um, you know, yep, yeah, well, there, there is that. I, I don't think that, you know, like the, 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 the paper people or even most of them probably aren't even really, really aware of of hemp paper, you know, and, and for something like hemp paper to be a reality, like here, here in Canada we have legal hemp, but we're, we're not making hemp paper here. Most of the hemp produced here in, in Canada is going to food products, either uh, de-hauled hemp seeds or hemp seed oil um, and uh, uh, things like that. So it, 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 there's not any real fiber fiber industry here, they're not making any cloth, they're not making paper, and the reason for that is not that it's not great for growing hemp here, but you need like millions or maybe possibly even billions of dollars of infrastructure in the form of uh, processing mills and facilities to, to do that type of processing and nobody's wanted to lay down uh, the money for that infrastructure that's needed at this point and that will be the same in the U.S. There, there has to be these types of uh, processing facilities available for the process once it's legalized. That's right. And and we had all that. I mean, and the Encyclopedia Britannica was printed on hemp paper for a hundred years. Yeah. Yeah. No, we can do it, but we just need to reevaluate. You know, another thing too is like in the paper industry here in Canada. I think probably like it's estimated like fifty percent of our old growth rainforest <laughs> that that have been logged have gone to to pulp and paper. <laughs> and. Um, uh, um, these people, the same people that own the, the the paper mills, they own the timber rights, and so they're not really too interested in converting over to a product that they don't really, you know, they got to buy off farmers and stuff like that when they already own the timber rights that that are feeding their their paper mills, you know. Um, so they're they're in bed, you know, they they got their, their one hand washing the other in, in a situation like that, and there's not the motivation there to change uh, change at, at such, on such a mass level. Do you? We got we had a lot of talk about the end of the world. I mean, the 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 people behind this, I think, and I, I please give me your opinion. These are the banksters. These are the people that started the wars. These are the Rothschilds. These are the Rockefellers. These are the Jacob Schiffs. But. Uh, they want the drugs, and they want to keep them illegal because they make a profit off of them. If they're running it, if they if they if they send the special forces down there to build radio towers to guide planes into Albrook Air Force Base, this is we're talking about big business. And 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 we invaded Afghanistan, and we have our troops now guarding the opium poppy fields in Afghanistan. Those nasty old Taliban were tearing it down. 
everything, it seems that the, the governments, at least of the United States, and I think this is a world government, the United States sends foreign aid to 150 countries, and these are uh, the only ones we don't send aid to seem to be the ones that don't allow the banks in. They, 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 they do both sides. They, they build, uh, they, they, they fund both sides of a conflict, and they start the conflict. You know, CIA goes out and salt, starts Al CIA, duh. You know what's? It, it's, 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 it's. As Jay Edgar Hoover says, it's, it's difficult for most men when they're faced with a conspiracy so vast. They can't comprehend it. Most people can't comprehend that we've had a hundred year war on the American farmer under the guise of a war on drugs. Is that accurate? I'd say that's accurate. You know, it's, uh, it sounds, sounds about right to me, you know, unfortunately. It's, uh, There's so much potential there. Now, even Obama has put out an executive order that's talking about the rural areas. But uh, we've got foreign corporations coming into the United States and buying up rural farmland right now. Huh. It's, uh, yeah, well, you know, I don't know. That, that really should be being worked by American people, considering the, the situation with jobs down there. I don't know what the plan is there. I don't, I don't really know too much about that, you know. Um, what, what the situation with, with foreigners buying up farmland in the U.S. is, but uh, yeah, it's just uh, trend. You know, Obama, you know, recently passed those laws against free speech down there in the United States, and then uh, um, y you know, this is going to be turning. Uh, uh, you know, we have protest government events now down there. It, it, it's it's just turning. You know, it's such a drag because Obama promised to. To bring so much change, and it, it's just been more of the same, if not worse. You know, the the the, the drug war has been intensified under Obama's watch, uh, um, not less than like he said he was going to take a rethink on it. You know, uh, um, it, it's tragic. It's just it's completely tragic, and uh, I, I don't know what the what the situation is, is going to be down there with this. Well, preparing for martial law, they've just passed a, a law down here to allow the military to come in if Americans get too upset. If if we and, and and you know they've tried to demonize the Tea Party. Yeah, I got a little bit of hope when I was watching the Tea Parties, but then the next thing you know, you've got the global uh, agents coming in like Sarah Palin saying, "Oh, we need to bomb Iran." They're trying to push us into a third world war. If the if 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 the Israelis succeed in getting the U.S. to go after Iran, we're uh, we're in a war. We're in a war that uh, could expand into nuclear. Is this what they want? Is this what they're working for? I mean, this don't have anything to necessarily to do with the whole hemp movement or the the marijuana movement, but it's it's a part of it. It's all it's all linked. Sure. It's to keep us. It's to keep us broke. It's to keep us down. To keep us. Uh, that's why the even in the states where there's medical marijuana, the feds are still coming in there and fucking with people, trying to take uh, time to take their gun rights away. Aren't they? Yeah, yeah. You can't have a medical marijuana license and a gun license down there. You know, it's crazy. And of course, yeah, again, if they make you a felon because uh, over a drug charge, you're not uh, you you're not allowed to own guns anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. Or both. You know, you're you're a second class citizen. You know what I mean? Your job your job uh, possibilities are limited immensely. Your your right to travel is limited immensely. Your right to vote is taken away. You're, you know, they, 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 you know, they, they turn people. No, they only just arrest them there, but they make them work. You know, for pennies a day. <laughs> you know, it's outrageous. It's like a, a slave uh, industry. My friend Mark Emery, who was uh, arrested here in Canada on American charges for selling marijuana seeds. Yeah, I've had Jody on. She doesn't use Skype, so I haven't been able to get her on. The, she said, "Send me an email." I said, "I talk on the telephone. This is the way I do things." So. Yeah. But uh, yeah. how's Mark doing? What's a what's a word on well, him? He, he, and and he, he, also, he's also right. he's out in Mississippi now, and uh, uh, you know, in the prison there, he's not doing too bad. He's making the best of his time, learning how to play bass guitar and uh, form a band, you know, and, and trying to, to to make the best of his time. But uh, he's been in another prison that was, you know, mostly Mexicans and other South Americans, a few English speaking. They're all foreign prisoners, 
there's no re rehabilitation in prison. Many of these people ha are in jail for working illegally in the United States, and then they make them work for nothing. You know, your choice is either you work or you go to uh, solitary confinement. And so they, 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 this is this is slavery, and this is, seems to be that that, that 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 in both Canada and the U.S. that as the countries have used up their own natural resources, they have turned their machination on the people themselves and began harvesting members of the public and turning them into a workforce that's cheaper than third world labor, uh, the prison force, you know, and uh, every stick of government furniture in the in the U.S. is made in an American prison. Uh, they, uh, in, in Arizona, they advertised, they, they ran an ad in the in, in local newspaper, we make more than license plates. Yeah, it's crazy enough. And this is putting Americans out of work. You know, like these are these are jobs that people should have, not not prison slave jobs that people can't compete with. They're, 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 a regular uh, uh, working industry can't compete with that prison industry because these guys are basically working for just a few dollars a day. And and we and and, and the press may say something about the slave labor in China, but we've got more people in prison than China does. Yeah. Yeah, well, the Americans got the highest incarceration rate in the world, by far. Even these places like Iran and Iraq, which they're supposedly liberating in the name of freedom, you know. Yeah, let me ask you, let me ask you about something here. They don't, they don't kill people like America does. There's a, there's a, the, the one time land of the free has become the prison capital of the world and the home of the piss cats, you know. Uh, <laughs> it, it's totally ironic. Now, let me, let me ask you something. I, I, I've been reporting on this whole process for... 20 years, and you know, talking. I mean, I've talked to the Branch Davidians. I've talked to Randy uh, Weaver. I've talked to uh, you know the Freeman. Uh, I, I've I've talked to pretty much every David Duke, and I tried to come up with one answer, and this answer is available in uh, probably 10 states down here. I don't know about Canada, but uh, I I decided that the the basis of all civilization was a self-sufficient family farm and what they've done is drive the farmers out of business they made it too expensive too uh, too too inconvenient to uh, they they drove them out of business and anytime a communist regime takes over countries they go after the farmers first and the uh, veteran or the uh, intelligentsia next and the veterans following that and we're in that third stage right now and the concept I came up with was Liberty Villages. If you put low-cost structures, teepees, yurts, tents, trailers, whatever, on a five-acre plot with a hundred acres of farmland there, and the people come in and work it, if you can generate your own electricity from the wind and the sun, and you can grow your own food, and you can grow hemp and marijuana there, you are starting to improve the the economy. You're starting to improve the the food supply, and you don't need the government or the banks for nothing. Is that an answer? Is that an answer? Now, now in in forty uh, in in forty states, you could do this without the help. You could do this without the help. But uh, in ten states, you might be able to do it with the cannabis. Yeah, I, so I don't. I don't think it's an answer because I think if anybody was really successful doing that, then you end up with another Waco when they find some reason to come in and, uh, well, that's and attack you. And you, what we need to do is we need to like you know change change the way the government is interacting with this plant. Well, that's I, I agree with that statement a hundred percent. But the only way we can do it is one person, one community, one family at a time. And if we can build on that and expand, if, it, if, if you built one of these and it was successful, yeah, the government would come in. If you build a hundred of them and they're all successful, you have set a, a tone and set a, a, a pattern and they would expand exponentially. You know, I think that um if that were true, then uh, the Occupy movement wouldn't be under so much threat. You know, I suspect uh, when the Occupy movement comes back here, you know, this is like you know, 
thousands, hundreds of thousands of people we're talking about, and quite organized, you know, and all working together, and uh, not really, really breaking any laws in the sense of uh, free speech and that type of stuff. But uh, I, I really suspect when we see uh, the occupiers come back this spring that both in Canada and the United States are going to be labeled as a domestic threat and uh, rounded up under these new, uh, 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 you know, arresting laws that, 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 that are uh, circulated around, uh, uh, you know, soul is being circulated around uh, terrorism where they can arrest you and have an indefinite detention and these new uh, laws about protesting against the government, you know, that, that Obama has just signed into law. Uh, you know, they're going to be a round up on all these types of things. It's, it's the, the, the direction that it seems to be going to me at this time. You're you're right, uh, and they 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 they've signed executive orders to get us ready for for all of this. They've got they've yeah. already signed executive orders. And listen, we got a couple of minutes left. Tell people uh, about your website, where and your books, and uh, where they can get it. And folks, mine uh, the it's all linked on freeamerican.com. You can go there, and you can go straight to uh, Chris's site. Yeah, yeah, you fruit. can check out my books at ForbiddenFruitPublishing.com or if you Google search or YouTube search Chris Bennett and Marijuana together, you'll get all sorts of stories and videos and, and, and things like that as well. Great. And uh, let's see here, folks. That one, uh... All right, and give me the list of books again, Chris. And, uh, the first book is Green Gold, The Free Life, Marijuana and Magic and Religion. The next one was Sex, Drugs, Violence, and the Bible. And my latest book is uh, Cannabis and the Soma Solution. All right. Well, thanks for having me on. It's been a pleasure. Well, thank you. I sure appreciate it. And let anybody on your list know about the show. It's linked up on the site. If you click on your name, it takes you right to the site. You can download that as an MP3 and uh, pass it around. Let people know about the show. All right. Okay. Okay. Take care, brother. Thank you. Bye -bye. I look, look forward to having you back again. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, and back here. Thank you. 